strategy and the hardest strategy, well, they're all hard strategies, honestly, but first strategy is to do not take it personally. Do not take depression personally. It's not your fault. You need to acknowledge your own pain, your own rejection, your own abandonment and fear that are caused by receiving depression from somebody that you love who's going through it, but to know that it's not your fault. And also to know that you're what's concerned, considered to be a safe person. And what that means is your loved one can go out into the world and out there, they can be, them, they can be most like themselves. They can be who they are, but they're wearing this mask where they're not letting anyone in and nobody's seeing the depression. But when they get home to you or when they get close to you, it gets very heavy and, and very hard and very sad and you can see and experience their suffering with them. And that's only because you're a safe person, not because they like other people better. It's just other people, they get to wear the mask. Strategy number two, and it's another very hard one, is you can't make anyone feel better. In fact, when we try to make people feel better, it actually causes them to feel more of a failure because they're failing to live up to our expectations and they're trying hard, but they can't, they can't shake it. So what happens is when they're trying hard to do better so that you can feel like you're helping, they feel more guilt more shame, more fear, more agitation, more powerlessness, and it feels more permanent. The depression actually worsens when somebody tries to make you feel better because you feel like a failure. Instead, what I encourage people to do in my coaching is to help people feel normal. So it's validating their feelings instead of shaming them instead of judging them it's validating that yeah your depression is really hard depression is temporary and what you're feeling is really hard and i just want to be there with you what i encourage people to do when it comes to actions because i'm a very action-based coach is instead of trying to get somebody to do something that they really don't want to do or don't feel like they can do where they're more likely to feel like a failure if they try it to just do simple things like watch TV together um, sit beside each other go for a walk together to do this do simple things that don't require a significant amount of effort number three when it comes to strategy is to share your perspective and expectations and this falls in line with number two is to make it really clear for your loved one that who they are is not depression. Depression is something they experience, but it doesn't define them. It's not their identity. It's, it's something that's holding them hostage. And for you to be very clear about your own ex expectations with them, to let them know that it's okay that they're not responding in a loving way or from, from a place of being able to give love, that depression is in the way of that right now and that's okay and it's gonna take coaching on your part possibly to be able to reach a point where it actually is okay it's one thing to be inauthentic and tell somebody what you think they want to hear it's another thing to genuinely believe it because you get it sorry I'm on a I'm on a boat and have to keep everything it's on my boat this is my dream living my dream um, Strategy number three is all about perspective. You know what, I have my notes out of, out of order because we just did that one. And I, whoops, just lost that one. Okay, strategy four is all about in how you interpret rejection. This is a huge one, it's a really hard one, but to, to know that when, when a loved one says, I need to be alone,
they don't mean I don't want to be near you, around you, I don't like you, I don't love you. What they mean is, is I need time to be escaped from depression, to not focus on depression, whether it be to sleep, any, anything that's going to be an escape from the depression is what they're asking for. Here's another really hard one when it comes to rejection is people with depression often will say, I'd rather be with my friends than you. And that goes back to them being able to put on a mask because when you can put on a mask, you're, it's an escape. So when people will rather hang out with their friends than you, it's only because they're escaping the depression for that very moment of time. They're escaping as much as they possibly can the feelings of suffering. Um, they don't have to focus on themselves. And if you're in a good, if you're in a relationship that's in good standing, when you go into depression, it's very common that the per the person you love will want to break up. He'll say, "I don't know if I want to be in our relationship." Again, it's not about you; it's about what they're able to give. And if you if you feel like if you feel like you don't like who I'm being, if you feel like I can't give of myself the way I would want to give as a partner, it's very common somebody to not want to be in the relationship anymore and, and they feel that they're going to be permanently that way and permanently incapable of giving and they'll always be that way so they for your sake they'll say they don't want to be with you the reality is is that's depression it's depression talking and it's the suffering and it's the pain um, another thing that'll come out in depression another form rejection is when they say you don't make me feel better so that's how depression in a person will shame judge basically do anything to create suffering for somebody else um, that's what depression tends to do is not just create suffering for the person experiencing it but also create suffering for others my last strategy is it is that you take care of yourself when somebody you love is experiencing depression. Your own self-care is the most important thing you can do for yourself. Um, I'm doing it right now as I am out here, not technically sailing, but drifting. Um, what happens is, like I was saying, is you really get sucked into somebody's depression. So you need to take actions, whether it be exercise, nature, gratitude, forgiveness, connection with others. Coaching. I can't stress how important coaching is. You can learn all about the kind of coaching I do um, individually at thrivewithbipolardisorder.com. Um, I will be doing community coaching in the near future. That'll be